Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by senior midfielder on the Vermont women's lacrosse team, Ava Vassell. Uh, Ava was the America East Co-Attacker of the Year this past season, and she also has made it on the American East All-Conference first team for the past three seasons as well. Uh, Ava, it's super awesome to get the chance to talk with you today, and how's everything going? It's going well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be on here. So, I'm yeah. excited to have you on, and obviously we're in the midst of the dog days of summer, so how has your summer been going <laughs> so far, and uh, what have you been up to since uh, graduating as an undergrad with Vermont? Um, it's been a crazy summer, uh, not one like most. I usually work in the summer a lot, but this summer I have been traveling. I went to Europe um, <clears throat> with five of my housemates for about three weeks or so. Um, we traveled. We started in Spain and traveled the coast, like the south coast along uh, France, and then we went up to uh, Amsterdam. And uh, we actually met CC in Nice, France, then in Amsterdam with Soap. So it was cool having like a couple of teammates all sprinkled all over the place. Um, and then I got back and my sister lives in Maui, Hawaii with her um, boyfriend there and they have a restaurant there. So um, we, my family actually also went there to visit them. So I've been kind of everywhere um, this summer. and I've been living in Massachusetts where I'm from and also in Burlington. Um, so it's been a very crazy summer. What's your favorite, fun. uh, Hawaii or Europe? I would say, I feel like Hawaii is probably a little bit better in my opinion, but yeah. I've never been to either one. So I really can't say. Yeah, it's a little, it's, they're very different. Uh, Hawaii is a lot more like relaxation and kind of like beach and kind of just hanging out. Whereas, um, Europe was just like a lot of walking around and seeing new culture. Um, obviously there's Hawaiian culture as well. It's really interesting, but, um, I don't know. I don't, I feel like I would say Europe just because I thought it was just so cool, even though I love Hawaii as well. Um, yeah. I just love traveling. I thought it was really awesome. Yeah. I definitely want to travel at some point in my life. I've never left uh, the East coast. I think the furthest I've ever been is Houston, Texas. So I feel like I got to get up there <laughs> more. So um, yeah. now obviously you have the extra year of eligibility. So do you plan on using that? And if so, like what have you been working on in regards to the cross training for the upcoming season? Yeah, I am planning to use that, using that extra year. Um, I'm getting my master's um, in an accelerated program here. Um, it's called Physical, Physical Activity and Wellness Science. For some reason, I can never get it out of my mouth. Um, but I'm planning on playing here one more year. Um, I'm really excited. Um, but in terms of what I'm working on this summer, um, it'd have to be a lot of shooting and footwork. Uh, last year, I wasn't really happy about my shooting percentage. I definitely felt I could do better. Um, I am myself's hardest critic when it comes to that stuff, but I definitely want to be better this year when it comes to shooting and being more accurate with my shots. So I've been getting in a lot of work there um, and footwork can always help in terms of getting around your defender and stuff like that. So I've been working a lot on both those things. Well, that's very exciting. And obviously if I was another America East team, I'd be pretty worried that the co-attacker of the year feels <laughs> like they didn't have that good of a season. So, um, but that's really <laughs> exciting though to hear. And, Thank you. Um, but I now want to sort of transition and sort of begin the podcast talking about the beginning of your career and sort of working all the way up to where you are today. That's how I usually go about these things. So uh, doing research on yourself, since you're from Milford, Mass, uh, talk about growing up there and how did you start playing uh, lacrosse? Yeah, I had an amazing childhood. Um, uh, I was very family oriented. We always spent time together. My family is very close and they still are. Um, I have a twin brother, so I always grew up with um, someone I could always compete with. Um, but I always hold that I'm 12 minutes older than her. So <laughs> I'm technically the middle child. Um, but no, so I always was competing with him. I always had a uh, someone to play with. My parents would always play sports in the yard with us. Um, they would kind of encourage us to be a little competitive with each other. Um, but yeah, we were always playing games, um, especially in the summer. My dad is a school teacher, so he had the whole summer off with us, which is really cool. And we got to hang out with him and um, play video games, all the above. So just from the beginning, um, we've just been a very sports oriented family and just kind of always been outside, kind of doing something with a ball or a racket or anything like that. 
Now, would you say you're better than your brother at lacrosse? Because I know he plays for Johnson and Wales. So I got to ask. I know he can't come in and defend himself. So, but you can. You oh, can pick it. <laughs> uh, for sure. Then if he's not here, you should hear him though. If he was here, it would cause a fight. But uh, I think maybe like a little bit, but you didn't All hear right. from me. All right. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> he's uh, a great and, player though. He's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool and to have your entire family play college lacrosse. Um, I know you said you compete with your twin brother, but did you also compete with your sister as well? Like, what's that? What was that dynamic like uh, throughout the summers, like you mentioned? Yeah, she's um, five years older than us. So we kind of were like the annoying little siblings for a little bit until we're older. But it was definitely cool because we grew up watching her playing her college lacrosse games. She also played at Johnson Well. So that also really inspired me to want to play in college, seeing what it was like and how fast the game could be. So um, we didn't play as much lacrosse together as uh, my brother and I, but she definitely inspired me in different ways in terms of the sport. That was cool. And growing up, did you have like a favorite player or team that you like to watch? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's crazy how much like lacrosse has changed now. Cause like, I feel like the sport is just a, different from what it used to be but like when I think of my favorite players back then um it'd probably be like Kayla Trainer, Michelle Tumalo um Taylor Cummings I'd like to watch all the big schools like Syracuse Maryland Northwestern so that was really cool and all those people I like just named is it's really cool because I got to actually like I've met all of them throughout the lacrosse world so it's a very tight-knit community which I think is really awesome That's but yeah awesome. I'd probably say those people yeah especially with Cummings with the draw controls. That's definitely a good person to learn from with that. Yeah. She um came and did like a clinic for my club once. And I was like starstruck. I think <laughs> I still have a signed t-shirt from her, which is really cool. Yeah. That's that's awesome. And before <laughs> college, you played for your high school lacrosse team with Medway where you had a lot of success there, both individually and with the team as well. Um, so just talk about your experience with Medway and what you took away from that, because to me, it seems like Massachusetts, there's, it's, lacrosse is definitely a popular sport, but it seems like it's more popular near the Boston area. I feel like in Central Mass, it's sort of kind of a niche thing. I'm curious what you think about that, but just talk about your just high school lacrosse experience with Med, Medway and what you took away from that. Yeah, um, I had a great high school experience. Um, I actually school choice from Milford High School to Medway High School. Um, I knew I wanted to be really serious about lacrosse um, in terms of playing in college. So I applied for the school choice program and I was able to get in, which is really awesome um, because Milford was a little bit more underdeveloped when it came to the sport. So I was very lucky to be able to do that. Um, and I just had a great experience. My team was filled with a ton of girls who played in club, um, very talented athletes. Um, and all my coaches were great. We had um, an older coach at the beginning and then we had um, the coach that was I was with for three more years after that, um, Coach McGill, and she taught me so many things. She played at Stonehill College. So it was so cool to learn um, all the tips and tricks from her, especially because she came right out of college and um, she was just an amazing coach. And my family, I mean, my family, excuse me, my team was just great. So, um, but in terms, you're right about that, where um, the lacrosse um, is not really centralized in central Massachusetts it's more towards the city like you said so um, we would see a handful of teams scattered all over the place that were either really good or like still kind of developing um, but I played in the Tri-Valley League and we played bigger teams like Westwood, Foxborough and those had a lot of talented players on them so um, our conference or league excuse me um was kind of a little bit in between like really hard or and then not so hard so it kind of gave you a look at both sides which is really cool do you have like a favorite memory with Medway when you look back on it um yes we actually Medway lacrosse wasn't um didn't really make it that far in playoffs before I'd say my class was there in the class of like below me um we kind of came in and turned the program around a little bit. Uh, we made it to playoffs for the first time, which is crazy. And then we made it to uh semifinal game, I believe. Yeah. And we ended up not winning that game, but we got really far, which was really awesome because um, that was the farthest we got in history. I think in Medway lacrosse history, which is really cool. 
And how do you think your time with Medway helped prepare you for college the draws with Vermont? Because obviously, like you mentioned, you're uh, playing those really tough teams, but you're also being coached by some really good coaches. And I feel like that just helps your development a lot because I feel like players sort of find who, what type of player they're going to be in those high school years. And then they can just work on those skills and get better at them in college. At least that's how I always viewed it. But I'm just curious mm -hmm. what you took away from that experience and how do you think the things you learned in Medway have been helping you out uh, with Vermont the past four years? Yeah. Um, those coaches, um, even through all my coaches, whether it just, it'd be soccer or track as well. Um, I did both those sports. I did soccer and winter track and as well as um, I'm my way across. Um, but I would say the coaching staff really prepared me. Um, they taught me a lot about discipline and really working hard at everything um, you want to excel in. Like it doesn't just come easy to you. So I think they pushed me a lot. Um, they gave me kind of a tough skin. Uh, you have to learn how to take um, constructive criticism. So I think they really helped me out with that. Um, and they pushed me to be the, um, the best I possibly could. Um, and they also really stressed how it was to have like a target on your back and becoming comfortable with that because um, a lot of times when you are one of like the better players in the league, you a lot of people like come for you or expect a lot from you. So I think dealing with that pressure and really knowing how to ground yourself throughout all of that, um, I can thank my coaches too in Medway Lacrosse. Um, for really preparing me for that in the bigger leagues of college. So I'd say that. How do you handle that now in college? Because obviously I feel I would consider you one of the better players in America East. And obviously winning the attacker of the year last year sort of solidifies that in my opinion. So obviously <laughs> defenders are going to be coming after you. So how do you sort of handle that target on your back uh, now as a collegiate athlete? Yeah, I would just say I use it kind of to fuel me. Um, as much as you can kind of, want to veer away from that feeling and it's uncomfortable um just learning to like be comfortable in that uncomfortableness I guess you could say I think it's just like I, I other people view me as the best so I also need to see that and strive to set like be at that expectation that's not better so um I think it's really cool that I kind of have a target on my back at times it is a little stressful and um I expect a lot for myself as well as I would hope my coaches and my teammates do as well so um, but there are times when it's hard, but I think, um, it's all really cool. So, um, I love it as much as it's like a love hate relationship, I guess you can say, yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's really cool. Now let's talk about your time with Vermont. So what was your recruiting process like with the Catamounts? So what made you want to go there versus other schools you might've looked at? Yeah. Um, I, it was my sophomore year. I actually committed, which is crazy. It was actually like, I think two weeks before the rule got put in um, where you can't college coaches and players can't speak um, until September of their September 1st of their junior year. So thankfully I committed right before that and I knew what I wanted, but um, it was kind of a whirlwind. Um, I remember my parents would sit me down and we'd go through like a little checklist we made or um, of like all the schools we wanted to email and talk to and stuff like that and I was I think like I remember talking to my parents the other day I was like remember when I used to cry at the kitchen table because I was like I don't know what I want to do I'm only a, a sophomore but um when it came to Vermont it was always so much I guess more relaxed when I would speak to my head coach Sarah Dalton um she would always call me and ask like we'd obviously have our check-ins but she made sure to really reach out and like ask not even just about lacrosse, but like about my family, um, my hobbies and everything else about that, which I really thought was cool. Um, and in terms of like picking to go here, I would definitely say, I think <laughs> probably every person says this whenever they talk about their school, but I like firmly believe that Vermont is so different in terms of like you step on the campus and, um, it's just like a different community and feeling, I guess it's like a vibe or like a, energy sense um it's just uh like everyone just wants the best for one another and you can see that when going to prospect days or uh, even like official or unofficial visits everyone's just so nice to each other and they just want others to succeed so I got that feeling and then the coaches were a big part of that um they always checked in on us they're just such nice people and um very insane insanely good players as well I remember meeting um, Dalt, Drummond, and Casey for the first time, Casey Pearsall, um, who is now the head or assistant coach at a 
Michigan, but I was like starstruck because I was like, oh my gosh, you guys are all such amazing players, but they're also such nice people as well. But yeah, I definitely see the community um, really one made me want to commit as well as Burlington is such a beautiful place as well. Now, as a freshman, what was like the biggest adjustment you had to make to uh, college lacrosse? Um, there are quite a few <laughs> because it is such a big difference that you're not really prepared for until it happens. But I would probably say um, how fast it goes. The speed is definitely something that like took my breath away because um, all these people, you're used to kind of being one of the faster on your team when you go into Division I. Um, so when everyone was kind of that same caliber and speed was even faster than you thought, uh, it's just kind of, it's surreal. But probably um, also how much you kind of, your IQ needs to grow, um, it, which it will over time. But like, I remember I was, I'm mostly attack now, um, like a midi slash more of attacker, but I was just a straight midfielder my, my freshman year and I did not know how many plays or would happen on either side so I remember I got like this whole binder and then you're looking at it and you're like I have to memorize this many plays and I have to go to draw and remember this and then I have to go to defense and remember this I remember like how do you do all this but like over time you get used to it and stuff like that but I'd probably say the speed and then how much um you're kind of expected of you is probably a big change but it all ends up working out and obviously your freshman year ended up getting cut short due to COVID uh sort of how'd you what, what do you remember about that season and sort of how did you handle the challenge of having your first year get cut short and then sort of having to prepare for your sophomore year, not knowing when that was going to happen because there was a lot of uncertainty at, at that point of the, during that time, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, um, it was so crazy. Um, we were coming back from Georgia and we just played Kennesaw State, I believe. And it's funny a lot of my teammates and I were talking about how we believe that that was like the worst game I'm I think I, I also watched CC's interview on this as well it's just like I personally thought it was my worst game as well I've like ever played so I was like that cannot be my last game but I was like oh it's fine because I didn't know yet exactly what was happening with COVID I was like we'll just come back and play another game and wipe the slate clean but two weeks later our whole season was canceled so that was just insane and then um going home and the world just completely shutting down was a crazy time for everyone. But in terms of like staying on track, um, we kind of made like a makeshift gym and my garage, our whole family would like work out together. Um, our neighbors probably thought we were crazy at the time, but I think anything you did during that time was not considered crazy, but, um, and then I would like run on our local turf um, I'd have to hop a fence though because <laughs> everything was shot down, sh shut down. Excuse me, but um, yeah, it was definitely kind of hard because you didn't really have any sense of, am I going to have a season next year or am I like, what am I really working towards? But making sure just to stay focused because everyone hoped that we would have a season eventually. So just having that in your mind and keeping that to fuel you um, for the next game and that loss or. No, we did not lose that game, but I personally felt at a loss of that game. So using that to kind of push me forward helped a lot. So one of the things that I like about your game is how you're good at draw controls. And I think it's kind of funny because you're a really good draw control taker your freshman and sophomore year. And then the past two years, you've been more of an attacker, like you said. So I want to mm -hmm. ask sort of like, how did you mentally make that switch from being more, I guess, defensively minded to more offensively minded between your sophomore and junior year? Mm hmm. Um, I would say you definitely use like defense all around, um, all around the field, especially when you're riding. Um, and that was one of my favorite things was to get right on the player's back and get a back check off them. Um, but I've always, I'd say, <laughs> I hate admitting this out loud that I've liked attack a little bit more um, in terms of shooting and just like all the plays that go into it. I think I've always just loved that part more. So um, I think once you seem to enjoy something more, you kind of put more into it, which not saying I didn't put as much defense, but I'm definitely have a better IQ in terms of the attacking side. Um, but in terms of like switching the way I think it is definitely, 
I guess, nicer to kind of focus on um, one side, I guess, more than the other. Whereas defense is, our defense is like a brick wall. And so um, I think being coached by Jessica Drummond, like she's such an amazing defensive coach. Um, it was really cool to learn all those tips and tricks, especially now that I could use it more um, in the riding sense. But I wouldn't say it was too hard to kind of switch over to attacking mindset just because I feel like I've always kind of had an attacking mindset. Um, but I definitely use def defense um, all over the world, all over the world, all over the field. Um, but yeah, I guess I've always kind of had that like mindset that I want the ball and I want to score rather than I need to get back on defense yeah. for my team. But yeah. And what would you say is like the biggest improvement you've made to your game since your freshman year? Um, my biggest improvement would probably be my confidence um, when I play as, as well as my IQ. Um, it's crazy how you think you kind of know everything at the age of 18, even in life. But once you get to 20, 22, 21, 22, and now even you're going to be 23 this year, which is crazy, um, how much you learn and just like all over the field and seeing different plays like work out by itself, um, making sure to get to the right place at the right time and decision making. Um, so I definitely think that decision making is a big one and learning where to put the ball at the right time, where to be. Um, but definitely confidence because when you come in as a little 18 year old and you're playing against these senior women that are <laughs> like so strong and fast, that's a little intimidating at first. So just like building confidence for yourself throughout the years and seeing what you can do for the program I think um, has really helped me and find my voice in the field as well as um, being individual to how I play not individual in terms of playing with the team but like my style of play I guess yeah. and also like I gotta ask you this since we are called the draw control podcast but like how do you sort <laughs> yeah. of work on that part of your game and what was your strategy like when you're in the circle um you don't have to reveal all your secrets but uh, you just give a little insight I guess of like how you sort of were successful in that area and how you still continue to be successful in that area as well thank you um yeah I would have to say a lot of that goes to my coaching staff um we spend a lot of time going through film and working on um wrist strength as well as being first with the ball um we work a lot of hand-eye coordination and become a great juggler this past year. <laughs> um, but yeah, Grace Jean Cola, our assistant coach, is, um, has been really helpful with that. She's taught us so much about um, the draw because it's such a crucial part of the game. Um, possession is the main part of the cross. So getting that can really make or break um, the game itself. Uh, but yeah, I'd say most important part would either can be communication, or being first of the ball, um, or being like blocking out for your teammates, blocking the your girl for your teammates, and uh, making sure that they have a clean pickup. So there's a lot of things that go into the draw, but <laughs> I think I just said like five things at once would being the most important. But yeah, probably all those combined. Now you play in America East. Just talk about what that conference is like and just the competition you guys face each game. Yeah, it's um it's really cool. I think our conference is um the underdog a lot of times. Um it's not one of the big schools that is kind of all smoke and mirrors and I think that says a lot about the players and the team for each of us whether that be us, Albany, Binghamton, UNH, uh UMBC. So um it's really cool to play against all these like really gritty players and um get to see how like what they do every game like every game is a different every team is very different I'd say like other teams are a lot more physical whereas other teams have a lot more finesse um, but you can just count on every team having very good players and being very gritty it's definitely a competition every time that's good and obviously you saw the success this year with Albany I think beating Virginia Tech which was uh or Virginia, one of the Virginia schools, which was a uh, big, uh, yeah. I think it shows how good your conference is and how you guys can compete with uh, those other big teams and those other conferences, like you mentioned. Exactly. I think uh, Albany beating Virginia was such 
an amazing thing, not only for Albany, which I give them so much credit for, but also for a conference. It kind of shows people um, that we're not just another uh, conference that can just kind of be swept under the rug. Um, especially after Stony Brook leaving, I think a lot of people kind of saw our conference as just like another, uh, like not so competitive um, thing. So um, it's really great for not only Albany, but all of us that they were able to come out with that win. Very proud of them. And obviously during your junior year, your team won the America East Championship. Just talk about what it was like winning that trophy and sort of what it meant to you. Yeah, it was surreal. Um, we all have these like bracelets that like say the date of the championship on it. Honestly, still, I still wear it all the time because it was just so crazy because I remember coming in to Vermont and talking to adult um, and she just kept talking about how she really wanted to change the program around and she believed she could do that with um, the coaching staff obviously um, and all the people coming in my um, class especially as well as the one right like above us and everyone under me so she knew where she wanted the program to go and um, it was to be American East Championships I mean champions when we got there and I remember seeing her after the game and I was like we did it like our team like did it everyone was like smiling and crying and it was just so crazy and I think um it just kind of opened a whole new realm for us uh, I think it was very far in the horizon before but now it's just kind of the standard so um it was just such an amazing experience and I wish I could go back to that day day and day again but we'll see yeah Hey, Hopefully can, this year. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, let's try <laughs> to do another one, you know, get some more memories. Yeah. Going. But <laughs> and obviously winning that championship made you guys go to the tournament for the first time in your career. You played Denver, a very good defensive team. Uh, even though you lost that game, what did you take away from your first NCAA tournament experience? Yeah, it was just insane to be there. Um, it was just a really cool opportunity and experience that we um have just never like been to before so um that was just really awesome and getting to play Denver they were just such a fast incredible team so I we learned a lot from it um obviously we wish we could have come out with the dub but just being there in itself and playing in the BC field where I came and watched games growing up and just playing such talented players was such a really such a cool experience so yeah now, being a senior this past season and obviously being a fifth year next next season, what type of leadership do you want to bring to the team? Would you consider yourself more of a vocal leader or be by example type of player? Um, I want to be there for my teammates, obviously, on and off the field. Um, I think that obviously you want to be there for them in terms of throwing great passes and being a good teammate, such as like getting goals and stuff for them and but um, off the field is um, just as important. So making sure that they can always reach out to me and, and um, just be a friend and lean on me when they need is also such a big thing. I think um, sometimes people don't see a lot of in terms of like the inside of a team. So making sure that that's a big uh, thing, but also um, in terms of leading, just pushing my teammates as um as hard as they need like I feel like my team is such untouched potential that we can uh, really show people this year so I think really pushing them and really telling them like how much farther they can go in terms of like they already are doing amazing but I think that they can be even better um, but I would say I kind of found my voice um, a lot more last year than I had other years um, I wasn't like the biggest talker um, especially on the field, like I would let other people talk because I think people can kind of formulate things a lot better. But um, last year, I definitely talked a lot more and um, helped out my teammates, whether that be with communication. Um, but I think I'm more of a lead by example player. Um, I'd say I work my butt off to get to ground balls first, um, do extra work outside of practice and stuff like that. And I think um, the younger players should pick up on my team, like my other teammates, upperclassmen, I'm um, doing those things. So stuff like that. And just talk about your team's performance this past season and what you sort of take away from it from your perspective. Yeah. Um, 
I think that we definitely, I was very proud of my team. I think that we had a lot of people step up to the plate and that's a lot going from being a younger player. Like I said, your IQ really needs to build. So I think that we had a lot of people play amazing. Um, and it says a lot that we had like three um, team individual awards, obviously, um, especially one being rookie of the year and CC um, with being defensive player of the year, which is incredible. Um, all of them but I think that like I said we have untouched potential and I think now that everyone's kind of got out of the year under their belt um, we can even be better because I think that last year was um, we definitely fought really hard but I think that we had a little bit left in our tank that we didn't really get to yet so I'm really excited this year to see what we can do um, in terms of playing together um, and really making meshing together a little bit more and like you mentioned you were one of those players that won an individual award being co-attacker of the year for America East. And I want to ask you, obviously you sort of got more offensively minded uh, throughout your collegiate career, just looking at the statistics. So what's the key to your success regarding your offensive part of your game and what strategies do you try to work on to create space and get shots off? Because obviously attackers are going at you and it's just one of those things I'm always curious about because I feel like scoring a goal in lacrosse is so it looks very easy, but it's obviously very, yeah. very difficult, as you know. Yeah. Um, again, I would have to probably like, like really thank my coaches. I've learned a lot through my um, offensive coaches here through that being Dalt, Casey, Grace, um, even coaches from high school, but yeah. Um, Doing film with them a lot, really watching back what you can improve on is such a helpful uh, thing to do. Um, in terms of like strategies, um, trying to think, but I would say change of direction and um, beating your defender through a change of speed is very, very helpful in terms of getting your hands free to shoot. Um, I think it's hard for a defender to stop someone when <clears throat> you're very quick laterally. So making sure to work on your footwork and um, creating that space and dodging before your defender gets to you and having enough space to make that decision is a really big uh, part of the game in order for yourself to get open. Um, and not being scared to kind of shoot around your defender. I think sometimes um, attackers kind of see them come up with their sticks and their hands all up in your space, but making sure that you see like the wide open space and kind of, being a little flexible with that. Now, overall, what have you taken away from your Vermont lacrosse experience and how do you hope to build off that uh, for next season, knowing that it's your final year of eligibility? Overall, I'm just <clears throat> really thankful for the people I've met along the way. I've met my best friends um, here and I still live with two of them. Thankfully, that are staying, uh, Aaron Kloostra and uh, Mackenzie Ballard are staying for a fifth year as well as uh, Kenzie Vask. Um, so I'm really excited to play another year with them and all the people on my team. But even some of the um, people who've graduated, my best friends, uh, I'm just so thankful for them and the community I've built here with that being our parents would come to all the games and seeing them and then our coaches and just all the opportunities we've been given. Um, but yeah, so I'll take that away. And also... <laughs> The lacrosse IQ, I've definitely taken a lot of um, that away and just like learning so much about the sport and how much I really love the sport. Um, I found new loves around along the way um, for lacrosse and just learning so much about it. It was just really cool. Um, but in terms of building off for next season, building up, I keep saying it. <laughs> um, I think I definitely want to just build my IQ even more and just be very assertive out there and be a leader on and off the field and just leave it out there because it is just my last year to play. So might as well just leave it out on the field and have no regrets at the end um, and just win another championship because I just know how possible it is. And um, yeah. Yeah. I have such amazing coaches. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, just uh, unfinished business uh, for next season. So I'm totally yeah. uh, totally with you on that. Yeah, I'm just very thankful for my coaches and my trainers, my strength and conditioning coaches. So all amazing people that Vermont's given me.
Uh, so we're now in a segment I like to call five questions that have nothing to do with sports. And the goal of the segment is to hopefully get to know you a little bit more off the field. Uh, so the first one is, if there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play yourself and why? Hmm. That is a good question. Um, Probably Scarlett Johansson. I think she's like so cool. And um, I know she's in the Avengers movie. So I think it'd be really cool if she played me. Yeah. You? Um, that's a tough one for me. I'd probably say Tom Cruise. I know he's a bit older yeah. than me, but I feel like uh I like his movies a lot just because they're super entertaining. And at the end of the day, one if if people want to see a movie about my life, it's probably somewhat boring. So I feel like he would make it more interesting and more exciting <laughs> for people to watch. So that's probably who I would go with if I had to pick anybody. That's a cool cool person to pick. Definitely. Now what music do you like to listen to? Um, I love, I like a lot of music, so it's kind of hard to pick, but probably mostly R and B, um, like pop soul, like Adele and stuff like that. Um, and then like folk music, like Noah Khan. Um, I'm really big on, especially being from Burlington, and he's from Vermont, so got get to get a lot of his concerts here, which is really cool. That's awesome. I like his new song with uh, Post Malone. That's been on the playlist for the past few weeks for me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Love I know it. I'm probably a casual because that's the first time I ever heard of him was when he did that song, but it's very good. So I got to listen to more. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Now, I think you have the best off the field style on the Vermont women's lacrosse team, but besides yourself, who would you say <laughs> has the best style on the team? Um, I would definitely have to go with CC, has great style. Um, Kenzie Vask and probably Gigi and Nello. Now, what is one item on your bucket list that you would like to do one day? Um, I'd really like to run an Ironman. My dad did it when I was, I think, about 11. And I, ever since that, I fell in love with the idea of kind of putting your body through that and um, doing that. So I think I'd really like to pursue that one day. Yeah, I would like to travel. I, I sort of mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I have never really gone anywhere. So I'd love to see uh, different parts of the world. I think... Probably Hawaii or Australia will be the first one that I'd like to do. <laughs> I think that seems yeah. like a lot of fun. Bias towards Hawaii, so definitely <laughs> go there. <laughs> now, last non-lacrosse question is, uh, what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Um, in terms of seeing, I saw a pink concert, which was so cool. She was flying through the air. I got to go with my mom. Um, she invited me, so that was really cool. And yeah, she was like doing a ton of acrobatics and she sounded amazing. So I think that would probably be the coolest thing I saw this week. I saw Oppenheimer this past week and I thought that was a pretty oh. interesting movie. Um, definitely a bit of a history nut myself. So it was just sort of interesting to see uh, what went behind uh, making the atomic bomb and just sort of his life in general. And I learned a lot from it. And I think it's a movie that it's long, but it was definitely a lot of fun to watch and definitely a bit scary as well if if people see the yeah. movie, they sort of know what I'm talking about. So that's what I would go with for my most interesting thing. Yeah, my friends all saw it. They said it was amazing, but sadly I was working when they went. But I definitely, it's on the watch list for sure. 